At the opening of part two of John McKenzie's performance theory book, Perform or Else, a black and white photograph of a satellite image of Florida crowns the top of the page. It is recognizably Florida, if you have watched enough Weather Channel updates on storms during hurricane season. But it does not capture the entire state of Florida as it would fit into statehood in the U.S. It is the middle piece of Florida, which makes it something different. It is a slice of the Sunshine State that, along with retirement property sales in Disney World, has put the state in the national spotlight since to World War II, the Kennedy Space Center. McKinsey shares his 1986 experience of teaching freshman English at the University of Florida the very day that Ch the Challenger space shuttle launched and then exploded on its way out of Earth's atmosphere. McKinsey's use of Challenger is intriguing since it focuses on the kind of hyper-performance necessary for taking a machine and people into space, an incredible feat. Here, McKinsey points to how this mission combined the equally difficult challenges of organizational efficiency, technological effectiveness, and performance itself. And as you might recall from history, or if you were alive in 1986 as I was, the disaster raised serious questions about our flight plan for performance. This flight plan affected my family because in the 50s, my grandfather, William Atkins, moved his family from West Virginia to Melbourne, Florida to work at NASA. What is interesting about this move was that it was a line of flight that took my grandfather's children into a new life. My mother became a popular student and a majorette at Melbourne High School, and my uncle was mentored by an amazing science teacher who assisted him in winning the Westinghouse Scholarship in Science and going to Harvard. My grandfather worked with fuels at NASA, an important part of the project. His work was never as real, however, until I saw rockets rising and climbing into the heavens. There were, of course, disasters over those years, but not like the Challenger. That was because of the teacher in space program, I think. Krista McAuliffe, a high school history teacher from New Hampshire, changed the calculus. Now students could learn about space from a real teacher in space, but only 73 seconds after liftoff, the shuttle's external fuel tank exploded. The large sky was blue as the spaceship divided by the explosion and went in various directions, quickly returning to Earth's gravity. The explosion reconnected me to how risky performance is, especially when it is industrial, chemical, collaborative, and high-level engineering. This kind of performance demands thousands of people get everything right for one shot. It reminded me of the work of men in my grandfather's generation who put up long bridges and tall buildings and fought wars and built cars in, in incredibly efficient and rapid ways. Take the new Bay Bridge in San Francisco. It took more than 20 years to finish with many delays because of concerns about materials, etc. The first Bay Bridge, however, had taken only three years to build, from 1933 to 1936. Perhaps performance is about risk, really. Risk rises with greater urgency and a drive to perform. As we reduce risk, we reduce how quickly and efficiently we perform. Take our decision to save soldiers' lives by removing them from the battlefield and choosing instead to target terrorists by using drones. McKinsey wrote Perform or Else in 2001, before 9-11, so I don't know what he would say today about drones. He might say, as he noted about NASA's treatment of McAuliffe, that if you are a public school teacher, you will not be allowed to control anything, push any buttons, click any switches. The point being that most of the professional world, whether it's technological, legal, or business, does not trust teachers and does not think public education generates students who can perform.